adding a scroll cue. So far, we've animated the background and used staggered animations to introduce the titles. The page is beginning to look pretty animated, but it leaves just one last piece, the scroll cue. In this lesson, we're going to add a subtle cue to the bottom of the page that lets people know that they can scroll to see more content. We'll use animation to make it easier to notice. Whether we need an arrow to tell people to scroll is a topic for debate. Some would suggest that it's no better than a sticky plaster, and that a better idea would be to design the layout of the page in such a way that scrolling is more obvious. Let's leave that discussion aside for the moment, and instead, we'll use this as an opportunity to see how multiple CSS animations can be combined in one little detail. To continue from the previous lesson, open the sample code zip file and look for the folder 02 Introduce Titles. A completed version of this lesson's code is in the folder 03 Scroll Queue. To get started, we add some extra HTML to our page. I've included the Chevron image in the Images folder. Add the following HTML to the header section of the HTML, outside the header content section. We'll use this to position the image. Next, in our CSS, set up styles for the chevrons container. The container has the class header down arrow. We're positioning this absolutely. And using the text align center to place the image inside it, in the horizontal center of the screen. It's positioned 4% of the screen's height away from the bottom, so should be visible on all screens, whether they be desktop or mobile. I've also made sure to set the Z index here to a higher value than one, as the header content also covers the entire screen, and we want to make sure this chevron is on top and visible. Looking at the result, we see a nicely positioned down arrow at the bottom of the screen. Let's begin with the keyframes. Since we're trying to convey the idea that people can scroll the page, we could hint at that with the animation on this scroll queue. If the chevron slides up as it appears, it'll suggest that direction of movement. We'll create some keyframes called fade slide up. We add a 0% keyframe with an opacity of zero and a transform in which we translate it on the Y axis four rems downward. Lastly, we have a 100% frame with an opacity of one and no transform. This animation is very similar to the fade slide down animation we made in lesson one. The only difference is the starting transform, where we're setting it to start four rem down instead of up. If this rings alarm bells, don't worry. We're going to be doing some optimizing in the next lesson and see if we can trim some of this back a bit. We then apply this to our chevron image. Inside the class header down arrow, img, we add the animation property with the animation name fade slide up, a duration of one second, a delay of one second, and the basic ease out timing function. We'll also set the opacity to zero so that there's no flash at the start before the animation begins. Here it is in action. If you look carefully, you might notice that the chevron animates into place last. It finishes just after the last of the content has stopped moving. This is a subtle detail and perhaps easily missed. So we can go further and add a second animation to this chevron. Let's make it pulse. So far, all the keyframes we've built have only had a start and end states. Let's build an animation with three states. We begin with keyframes and the name pulse, and we'll add a 0% frame, a 50% frame, and a 100% frame. At 0%, we'll add an opacity of one and a transform of none. 
Then at 50%, we'll change the opacity to 0.8 and add in a transform to scale it down to 0.8. Lastly, at the 100%, we'll add an opacity of 1 and again, no transform. So in this, we've added a middle state, 50%. The animation begins with the chevron at full size, then it scales it down at the halfway point before scaling it back up again. It also fades a little when it seems to be further away, or smaller, from the viewer. We'll apply this to our image by adding a second animation to the animation property. After the existing animation, add a comma, and then the name of the second animation, which is pulse, a duration of 2 seconds, a delay of 3 seconds, and then the timing function of ease out. And we're going to use an iteration count of infinite, so it plays forever. Multiple animations, like multiple backgrounds, are added by using commas. Each will stack and should work in parallel. You should be careful though, when more than one of the keyframes operates on the same property, such as transform, it can cause conflicts. I'm using a delay here of three seconds for the pulse animation to make sure it doesn't start when the fade slide up is animating. Since we're telling this animation to play forever, we don't need to specify the fill mode. We can see it in action here. Lastly, a quick note about Safari. While the above works well in most browsers, such as Chrome, it runs into trouble in Safari. We can fix it by splitting these two animations up and applying one of them to the container. First, we remove the pulse animation from the header down arrow image block and move it up to the header down arrow block itself. This animation will wait three seconds before starting and there's no longer any conflict with the fade slide up keyframes. It's always tempting to go a bit crazy and make everything animate, but that's rarely a good thing for your visitors. People want to be able to read and use the site without being bombarded with movement. So do go easy on the infinite animations. In this case, it's quite a subtle animation. Experiment with what works for you, but do dial it back to the point where the animation helps your visitors rather than gets in the way. In this lesson, we learned how to create keyframes with more than two steps. We combined multiple animations into one element and learned how to make an infinitely running animation. We've covered a lot so far, so in the next lesson, we'll take a step back and look at ways we can simplify some of our keyframes.